I enjoy sharing how I create the products and fulfill the orders that are sold in my Etsy and Shopify stores. I was looking out my studio window at a wind chime that's in my backyard and thought about buying a new one. Then I decided to see if there were any silicone molds available so that I could actually create my own wind chime in my own color palette. I found several molds on Amazon but selected the one with a butterfly above the hanging ring. So if you want to see how I created a wonderful and whimsical wind chime, keep watching. Hello gentle people. If this is your first time visiting my channel, or if you are a returning subscriber, welcome to the Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. I hope that you will see and hear something that inspires you to create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, uh, an entrepreneur, and every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop. As always, if you like what you see but don't want to take the time to create it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at Sparrow Art Vibe Shop on Etsy. You can stop the video right now and scan that QR code that's on the screen and that will take you directly to my shop. Also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, add a comment or ask a question, share and of course if you're not a subscriber please subscribe so now let's take a look at the materials that we need to make this whimsical wind chime okay gentle people the first thing we need for our wind chime is the mold and this package just arrived and so I have not seen what's inside. I know what I saw online. So I'm going, you're going to join me in opening this. I'm supposed to tear at that perforation, but clearly that's not tearing. So this is really like a kit. This is like a wind chime kit. So we have so our silicone mold. The, um, the top ring. Okay, let me go get that. I am not, <clears throat> I am not entirely sure what all these things are, are actually called. This, of course, this piece of the mold will be the ring top. Uh, these are like the inside pieces. I don't know what you call them. This is the butterfly at the top that will hang. It will hang like so. Uh, and these are the actual pieces. Now this set that I chose did not come with a bunch of butterflies. It came with these geometric shapes. So you have one, two, three, four, five pieces to your sil of silicon molds. You have, um, these are decorative beads. You have three tubes, three aluminum tubes. These tubes, I don't know if you can see it, in, are hollow, so that'll make them have a different sound. And then they also include in the kit um, some clear nylon uh, thread. So, oh, and then 
These are, what are these? I don't know what these are. These look like, um, I don't know what these are. These look like the little positioning beads. Yeah, I think that's what these are, positioning beads. Okay. It's so funny to have these little bottles, but they have not had the larger ones in a while. So the Craft Smart Part A casting resin, the Craft Smart Part B hardener. Since I have not used this mold yet, I have to go and measure how much resin we need. So I am going to put out this measuring cup, the large one, as well as the small one. You, of course, need the larger stir stick, four of the smaller stir sticks, our nitro gloves, and then for our mica powders, I am sticking with the Pantone theme for 2024 peach, or, yeah, so we're going with the May Spring Peach Gold, the May Spring White Chalcedone. That there. And then I like the contrast, so we're going to be using the Saya Bronze. Remember, this resin does not come in containers that have labels on them. You have to just order it, take it out the box, and then mark it yourself. So this is the Saya Bronze. And then I used this crushed glass when I made the um, the boho uh, gradient arch. And because this is going to be hanging, I want the sun to be able to hit these pieces of glass and create some beautiful, magical um, reflections. So that's it. That's what we need. As always, before we get started mixing our resin, we need to just review the manufacturer's instructions. And we are again working with the CraftSmart Clear Casting Resin. And our directions tell us that we need to mix equal amounts of Part A and Part B for a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. And then we are going to slowly mix for a minimum of five minutes. That's what we're going to do. In the materials, I had both of these measuring cups. We don't need this one. It turns out that this uh, wind chime mold only requires 80 milliliters of resin. So that's what we're going to pour right now. And we always pour the Part B hardener first. So that'll be 40 milliliters of the Part B. And then we need 40 milliliters of the Part A resin. Was the hardener this is the resin so we're going to start this and set it for five minutes Alrighty, we are now going to divide our resin into four small cups. So we are going to put uh, some glass, our crushed glass, 
is going into this first cup. And again, when you add this glass, you want to stir it thorough, stir it real well to make sure each um, piece particle, shard, I don't know what you want to call them. Every piece of glass in here is covered in resin. We don't want any blank um, air pockets where we didn't have resin. Okay, so I think the camera can capture that. That's our glass. Okay, and then our white Chalcedone, and I like this because this is not a white white, this has more of an ivory tint to it. It's very, it's a warm, it's a warm white, kind of like a winter white. So there's our white Chalcedone. I want more peach. Uh, so then we're going to do our bronze. And again, the bronze is an accent color. It's always nice to have something that's darker um, or that's uh, 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 opposite on the color wheel. That's why red and green, pink and green look so good together. And so we have our bronze. And then our peach. Peach gold is what they're calling this. So there's our peach gold. Let's this. And now we get to pour our resin. Okay, so let me just point out that these each have a little pin thingy on each one of these molds. So when you're pouring, um, where I want to add the glass, I want the glass to be at the bottom of the jewel, not up here where the prong is, but they're not in the same place on each one. On this one, the little hole maker is up top. On this one, the hole maker is on the bottom. Uh, in the corner on this one right here, I don't actually see one on there, so that may not... That may be like a weight or something. But there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one in this corner. Okay, I still have some moisture in these. Okay, and the way I know that I need 80 milliliters of resin is because what I always do when I get a new mold is I fill the mold with water and measure and that's how I know what I'm working with. So let's start with our ring. And I am going to do the inner part. This pad is going to be a problem. I am going to do the inner part of the ring with the bronze. just going to pour and again you always want to make a little spout by pinching the cup and then our pinch 
peach. And then our white. I am not putting glass in the ring. I am not putting any glass in this top ring. We're going to do the white on the outside as best we can. Alright, so that's our ring. Alright, and so for our butterfly, I want the butterfly to have glass right in the middle of the wings here. A lot of people use the pipettes and squeeze. Um, I think if you have uh, good enough eye-hand coordination, you can get away with just pouring like I'm doing. In this instance where this uh, little piece is for you to make the hole, make sure that the resin goes behind that and that you don't have an air bubble back there. Alright, so that's our butterfly. Okay, so on our jewels, remember I said these have the little, um, little stick-up things for the hole? So I'm putting my glass opposite. I want glass on these, but I need the glass to be opposite that hole so that the glass is at the bottom. Of the jewels when they're hanging. Some of these pieces of glass are kind of large, so you may have to use some tweezers. Some of these pieces of glass are a little large.
Now here I have <clears throat> here I have resin, but I don't have glass. So let's get some glass. And that's a big old chunk. Let's just stick it on there. Oh, this is a very narrow space over here. Let's see. Okay, well, I'm not going to spend more time with this. I am going to I'm going to add some white. Alright, pipette might be the better thing to do here. Oh, let's see. That's glass. So you can pour these colors in any pattern, any order you want. Right, and then we have this big one over here. And then we have these rounds. So let's use the end of our resin in our rounds.
bunch of glass left here. Uh, not quite a bit of glass. Well, not quite a bit, but I have more glass than I anticipated having left over. glass left over I'm just going to drop it inside here uh, some of it will just um, lay on the bottom of the mold so you will be able to see it but it won't be the same as having it just be clear because it's through the resin um, yeah let's just drop some of this glass in here to get it used Just going to draw a line through there, draw a line through there, draw a line through there, and just kind of give that a swirl. And on this one, we're going to give this a little swirl. Uh, be careful if you're doing this with a toothpick because you can scratch your mold. Okay, so those um, are done. And so let's use the heat gun to pop any air bubbles. So on these, where this ran over some, when we uh, unmold it, we'll just have to trim that. Oops, nope, don't want that. Ooh, because that's making that run into that one. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm just taking my toothpick and I'm going through and just pushing the glass down. Uh, where this is going to be hung, it's not like somebody's going to be handling it. So you don't need to be as concerned with the glass, but anytime you're using crushed glass, you want to make sure it's below the surface. Okay, so we are just going to cover this. It's 10 in the morning, and so we'll leave this. We'll unmold. We'll probably be able to unmold this this evening. All right, here we go. We're covering this and allow this to cure at least six hours. These are thin, so it's not going to take as long for them to cure. I am back. So this is always, as I say, the most fun part is when you uncover this and then we unmold it to see what we're actually working with. So we'll start with our ring. And again, those little pins there create the holes. So yeah, that's kind of nice looking. 
Again, that's the copper, the peach, and the um, uh, white chalcedony. So that's our ring. All right, so let's see what the little butterfly looks like. These are really thin molds. When the molds are thin like this, I'm always concerned about tearing them. So we, oh, I like that. glass that's in her wings. That's nice. Okay, and then these, um, I don't know what these are called, but let's just, yeah, that's kind of cool. That works. Yeah, those work. And then the jewels. Now, um, I sort of did a, a so over poured on a couple of these. I went back and kind of scraped some of the ex. <clears throat> I went back and kind and scraped some of the excess resin off, but some of these are connected, and they will need to be trimmed. But that's what we're looking at. need to be trimmed. Now these were connected. These ran, oh, there you go. Okay, so these ran, the, the resin on these ran together. So these have to be clipped and then trimmed. use my cuticle cutter oops to trim this excess off of here and then I'll have to use the Dremel to sand that edge down because that's going to be a sharp edge now that I've cut it and this is a wind chime, so it's not like somebody is going to be handling it. But you want to make sure anytime you're, you're doing this that uh, your, your items are as safe as possible. But this is what we have, so let me um, just vacuum this up. Okay, so our ring is fine, our butterfly is fine. I don't know what these are called, but they're fine. Uh, good. I'm just going to hit the edges of all of these with the Dremel, you know that? I'm just going to do it. Okay, I'm stopping this for a moment. Just to say, I have a piece of glass that's sticking up right here, and while it doesn't feel sharp to me, it is sticking up, and so I am going to sand, <clears throat> I'm going to sand that piece of glass down smooth. Again, you just don't want um, any possible injury to come from your uh, projects 
especially if you're selling them. Uh, if you're making them for yourself, you don't want any danger either. So we're going to sand that piece of glass down. All right. My Deco Art Gloss Varnish. Uh, most of these did not need. Uh, let's do that one. Right, <clears throat> that is done. Okay, so we need to get assemble this, and so we have our <clears throat> we have our clear thread, our clear nylon thread. We have our tubes. Have these little pincher things. This set came with these pink decorative uh, balls and obviously pink is not going to work with my peach and my um, bronze so we're not going to use these but I'm looking at this they've got a big one and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven two. so they have 12 little ones excuse me they have 12 little ones and one big one we're not going to use this this did come with assembly directions and I have to tell you this is so funny well it's not funny to you and you might think I'm slow but when I was reading the directions on how to assemble this I was really bothered by this first um, step one Step one says cut five equal length crystal wire, pass them through 10 holes. And then it says uh, pass through the positioning beads and squeeze with pliers. Now I, to save my life last night reading this, could not figure out how I was supposed to get five pieces of string, thread, wire, whatever you want to call it, through 10 holes. I looked at that diagram um, and you might just call me slow <laughs> but I tell you it took me a minute to figure out how to get five pieces of thread through ten holes there are ten holes on here so what I finally with my little slow brain figured out is that this wire has to go through two one wire goes through two holes Okay, so if you're, don't be like me and sitting there saying, now how do I put five wires into 10 holes? Like, that can't make sense. That's got to be a misprint. But it turns out it was not because if you take and feed it through one hole, okay, that's how you get your five pieces through. That's how you do that. So one piece goes through two holes. Um, it took me a minute to figure that out. I kept looking at the diagram and saying, I don't get it. I don't know what they mean. So we are just going to do like so. And then cut this. And then I'm going to pull this out so all my, all my strings are the same length. So that's my five pieces of uh, thread, or whatever you want to call this, wire, I don't know. And so again, you're going to push it through the top, pull it underneath, and 
and then pull it through the next hole. So again, we're going to stick it from the top, pull it out the bottom, and then push it through the bottom back to the top through the other hole. And that's how we get five pieces of wire through 10 holes. And then it tells you to um, pass those through the positioning beads. And that's what these little thingies are. These are positioning beads. So let me cut this open. Drop a few of these there. Now this too <laughs> is challenging. Okay, so we're going to take these two pieces of wire Okay, look at that. We did it. Okay, so now I'm just going to try and even out these threads. Okay, they look about even there. And then we take our pliers and we squeeze that little, whoops. squeeze that little positioning thingy. Okay. I think I'm going to put another one. Oh, let's see. Can I get all of these through here? Well, I'm going to just trim that. Okay. So that's done. Took me a minute, but figured it out. That's our top ring. Okay, and now <clears throat> back to these directions. Uh, step two, uh, you are to use this one that has all the holes in it. This one only has, this piece only has two holes in it. This piece has, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven holes in it. And so step two tells us that we are to use equal lengths of wire to pass through the two holes respectively. I figured it out. Again, uh, okay, let's try this. It's nice that this is clear, but it makes it a little more challenging to work with because you can't actually see Board. Okay, so if I'm understanding this, <clears throat> uh, where'd I just figure out the holes? I just thought I had this figured out. Hold on a second, guys. Let me think. Okay, so we're going to go through this one in the middle. And we're going through... Same thing like we did before from the underside. Okay, so that wire. So that one's in. One, two, and then from the other. Okay, hold on, let me see. This hole and this hole, I believe. 
All right. Think I got it. Think I got it. You might be better at this than I am. Okay, that took a minute. Now this is supposed to be inside this, and I don't know that they need to be the same height. Um, okay. So now we have, oh, that doesn't look even, let's see. That doesn't look even, I'll have to work on that. Mm. Okay, so now we want to put our tubes on. And you can see these are different lengths. So it says take a I don't know that I'm doing this correctly. We're going to run this through here. You could almost use a sewing needle to push this through and have it probably be easier than what I'm doing. came out the tube. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Did it come out the tube? Yes, it came out the tube. So we have one tube on. Let's do another tube. Let's do something I know I can do right. All right, guys, you all are probably, ah, <laughs> I tied the knot and it's not even on the tube. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta 
gotta be kidding me, really? Needless to say, I'm a little frustrated. Um, I'm just gonna set that aside for now and tie wires onto the jewels. Let me do something that I know I can do reasonably well. Um, so I am going to just, where's the hole for here? This is something I know I can do. And I may go back later and take this apart and put it back together after I kind of figure out the best way to do this. But I'm telling you, this is not, um, this part of it is not fun for me. going to do something that was easier uh, not necessarily yeah let me do something that I know I can do with some some confidence and that's put these on You are probably having a lot of fun laughing at me right about now since I can't quite figure out what it is I'm supposed to be doing or how I'm supposed to be doing it. So what I am going to do is what I can figure out. Um, and you're probably better at this than I am. Uh, I don't know, these directions just weren't, um, I guess they're clear and I'm just not getting it. Uh, so again, I'm doing it the way I, <clears throat> I think I can do it and make it work. So now I am going to start tying on the jewels, all of these jewels lined up here nicely. Uh, I don't know what this is for. I can't figure out what this one's for because this piece didn't have a hole in it. I don't know. This one didn't come with a hole, so I'm not entirely sure what this is for, but uh, we'll figure it out. So right now I'm going to start tying these onto my ring. Mm, I 
don't know, guys. You all are seeing me totally out of my, to totally out of my element now. Uh, I haven't had this much trouble doing something in a long time. together. Let's see if I can tape them and hold them so I know what's here. Okay, those two go together. Then we come around. This one and this one. This is crazy that they all just came, they slid right out of that little pincher thingy. Okay, I did go find my set of fasteners that I bought um, for uh, making jewelry and stuff, and some of these little pincher thingies are right here. And of course, these are larger. Um, and let's see if let's see if that will help me put these back together again. Let's see. I guess I should have taped them further down so I can get the thingy on them. idea to tape was a good idea because it keeps everything separated but now I can't get the darn tape off of here and this funny taped it together now I can't get the tape off of it <laughs> too funny. So the tape idea was a good idea, I just didn't implement it correctly. more secure <laughs> yeah these little teeny things aren't worth much drop these back in here this is yeah they're not those little things these that came in the package useless because again, that thread slid right off of that. Okay, so now what we were trying to do is start down. Um, okay, so I think that will hold. And then we put that one on. And so now let's, let's put 
put another one. Let's try and put another one on. And I'm just taping that to keep that out the way. Okay, we're making progress, guys. We are making progress. Okay, now I am really confused. I am confused because Good morning, Sparrow Art Vibes. How may I help you? Good morning, Sparrow Art Vibes. How may I help you? Have a great day. All right, folks. I am confused because there are 10 holes on this darn thing. So I have a hole here, one here, and there are 10 holes, but I only have All right, I have attached one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have attached eight jewels to this. The butterfly is not a jewel. The butterfly is going to go on top up here. The butterfly will go on top. The butterfly will go on top. Um, and of course this is going in the center like so this will we'll pull this up through the middle but my confusion is that I have 10 holes but I only have eight jewels so let me go back and check my mold let me make sure okay so we had the ring which we've used we have the butterfly which we've used. We have the piece for the for the chimes which we've used. We have this piece which is a weight, I guess. And then jewels. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine jewels. There are not ten jewels on this darn thing. And that big one did not have a 
uh, thing for a hole. See right here? The big one doesn't have a place for a hole, so I'm going to have to drill one. Um, but this is frustrating. This is frustrating. So I am going to drill a hole in this so that I have... Um, yeah, I'm going to drill a hole in this. Let me do that now. So again, the problem that I have is that there are not um, 10 jewels with this mold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one I didn't think was a jewel because it didn't have a hole in it. Yeah, see that's just three, six, nine. So it's missing a jewel. And like I said, that big square one, this one right here, did not have a pin on it, uh, did not have a pin like that or like that to create a hole. Um, so yeah, this is a flawed, this is a flawed set. Just be aware. And just in case as you're looking at my table and you're saying that there are 10 pieces there are 10 jewels you're saying you forgot that one hazel this is not a jewel this goes on the center string let me show you the diagram on the diagram that round piece with the two holes in it that goes right on the bottom, so I have to run a piece of string straight up through the center there. Um, yeah, align all the lines together and fix them with multiple positioning beads. And then it says, hang your favorite decorative pendant. So this is like a balancing piece so we need to put a string through here put a piece of a long piece of thread through that one Okay, so the way this is on here, we're going to take this.
this long, this one, <clears throat> this circle with the two holes in it goes at the very bottom, but this also goes through the middle of the piece with the chimes. There is a hole right there, and this is supposed to go through that hole. Make sure I'm down here where you can see what I'm doing. So what I was saying was this piece, where are we? Okay, so where's the loose? So that should be like so. So we are going to put these through one of my little thingies because the ones that came with the kit are cheap. So we are, we've done steps one and step two, and then step three is align all the lines together and fix them with the positioning beads, and that's it. That's what they tell you to do. So somehow, and I'm not sure, this is supposed to come up. Ooh, God, these things are all just tangled. This is, this is no fun. I need something to hang this on. Well, I work with it. These are all twisted over here. Let me see. Can I see to untwist them? No. 